Hello, let us continue our discussion on Ovid's metamorphosis. Now, in your syllabus, you will find that uh, there are three particular sections that has, I, I have already mentioned about them. And these are being associated with the three particular books. The first one is associated with Pentheus, the story of Pentheus. The second one is associated with the, the story of Pyramus and Thisbe. And the third one is associated with the, the story of Tiriu and Procne and Philomela. Now, before going to this particular section, that is uh, going to this particular tale uh, or the story of Pentheus, first of all, I must say that in this particular text, as we can find that there are ample references of the stories and ample references of the, of the uh, in informations that have been gathered by Ovid from different other sources. It is better to deal with the characters and better to know something about the characters from Wikipedia and other internet sources. As for example, who is this Pentheus? Who is this Achaean? Who is the uh, uh, is say Agave or maybe Tiresias and maybe other characters? It is not good for us to describe everything here in detail. Rather, it will be better for you if you try to browse the pages of history of literature. If you browse the pages of history of myth and ultimately you have Wikipedia, you have the internet sources or resources and from where we can get it uh, easily. We know that in Greek mythology, Pentheus was the king of Thebes. Okay, His father was Achaean, as you can see here, he's the son of Achaean and obviously uh, he was the wisest or the, the Achaean was considered to be the, the wisest of the Spartoi and his mother was Agave. So ultimately, you will gather the basic information from Wikipedia. Now let us begin with this particular story. What it says. Uh, now Pentheus, the son of Achaean, was a man who despised the gods. Fundamentally, you will find that as the particular story is taken from Greek, and as we are reading a particular kind of a Latin literature, translated into English by uh, or in the prose form. So ultimately, we will find that the, the particular religion that it will produce, it will create, the particular religion is actually associated with certain kind of paganism. Do you know what is paganism? This very term, paganism, is associated with, you know, pre-Christian religious perspectives. It can be to some extent, it is related with, or to some extent, it is quite similar to the typical Hindu culture, you know. As we can find that the pagans considered that in everything there is a reference of God, okay. In trees and waters and stones, everywhere you can find the presence of God. And ultimately, in Hindu religion too, you can find the same is being in operation. So therefore, we can associate these two. Now, before Christianity, it was considered that there are not a single God, rather gods. And that's why the G is small and these are plural. But when it is the matter with Christianity, you will find that these are actually indicating towards G-O-D, God with G capital, that means the single. Now, here you will find the particularization has been associated with the concept of Liber, okay, who is actually Bacchus. Now, who is Bacchus? In the Roman perspective, you will find that Bacchus and the, the particular god that is Dionysius in Greek, these are quite similar. Bacchus and Dionysus, they are the similar kind of gods as you can see. Why? Because they are associated with vegetation god. Okay, the concept of vegetation god is always there. Now, in a typical society, where the agrarian setup, where the cultivation, where the agriculture is at the core, is at the focus, then the, the most important god will be considered to be person or to be the god who is associated with agriculture or maybe the agricultural fields. So that's why you will find, it is not simply the agricultural forms, but at the same time, you will find the different kinds of attributes are associated with them. Now, what I'm trying to suggest here, that in this particular story, you will find the, the implication of liber, okay, and maybe associated with uh, 
the, the particular follower of Libra that is Aquitus. So all these things will be described in detail in this particular story. Now Pentheus, he is the son of Achaean that I have mentioned just now. He was a man who despised the gods. That means, uh, was it associated with any kind of atheism? Or rather, he was related with any particular god and now he is despising Liber. So this will be discussed in detail here. He alone among mortals scorned their prophet and laughed at the old man's words of warning. Okay, so that means the, the prophet who has been named as Tiresias, the, the particular character Tiresias, again, it's a mythical character or mythological character and you will find the references of Tiresias, the blind Tiresias and the story of Tiresias, what actually made him blind. All these things have been described and rather found in the Greek myths. It is better for you again to go through the internet and e-resources and find who is this Tiresias, who is this prophet. So now, Pentheus son of Achaean was a man who despised the gods. He alone among mortals scorned their prophet, that means the prophet of the mortals, and laughed at the old man, that is Tiresias' words of warning, taunting him with his loss of sight. Why Tiresias was blind and he taunted him. Now, if you go through, ultimately, through the, the, the fundamental basics that have been provided or given by Aristotle in his poetics, that is, the, it's a kind of a book that is based on, or that is the, you know, theorizing, it is the art of poetry and theorizing art of poetry and fundamentally you will find that it is being associated with, uh, uh, to be specific, with tragedy and epic poetry you will find somehow that uh, Aristotle propounded a particular kind of orientation to tragedy with a particular view that a tragic hero must have a kind of a flaw within. What kind of flaw? At some time it is being considered as hubris, at some kind of time it is being associated with hamartia. So these terms are Greek terms, obviously it is something problematic for you to understand. But ultimately this hamartia and hubris, both these in the Greek culture being associated with extreme form of pride or insolence that is present within you. Now certainly when we find the story of Pentheus, when we find the story of these kings like Oedipus, you will find there, you will find that they are suffering from such kind of hubris, they defy God, they are against gods. What is the source? What is the reason of this temperament? And you will find that probably the main reason of this kind of temperament is the pride and insolence. And you will find that they are enjoying so much supremacy. They are enjoying so much power, okay? So much authority, so much omnipotence that actually led them towards such an extreme. Now here also you will find in Pentheus that particular arrogance that particular, you see, that, that typical pride and insolence is always being associated with him. So that's why he is taunting Tiresias with his loss of sight and with the calamity of his blindness. Why Tiresias is blind? Now, this theme of blindness is, the, is, the, is at the core of this particular story. Who is blind? What does the term blindness signify? Is it simply referring to the mortal blindness or rather it is associated with the, with the uh, psychological blindness? Okay, you will find what Tiresias can see, the future of Pentheus. Pentheus cannot. Tiresias is physically blind, but he has the foreknowledge of everything. He is the soothsayer to some extent. He is the prophet. He can make prophecies. But if you think in terms of Pentheon or Pentheus, you will find that he is not mortally blind. He is not physically blind. But he doesn't have the capability like Tiresias to foresee the future. So what type of blindness is the focus of this particular term? We will come to that later. So here it says, that Pentheus taunts Tiresias regarding his loss of sight. Pentheus taunts Tiresias regarding the blindness. But the seer, means father here Tiresias, 
shaking his white head. Why the white head? Because he is the aged man. And at the same time, you will find that the, the typical form of age is always related with what? The term age, the term like say white hairs, gray hairs, these are associated with not ignorance, rather knowledge. So Tiresias is a knowledgeable man. But the seer, that is Tiresias, shaking his white head, spoke these words to him. What does he speak? How lucky it would be for you if you too were to be deprived of sight so that you could not behold Bacchus or Bacchus is rather it is to be said. So here it says that how lucky it would be for you. So it is something ironical. You know what is irony? Irony, this very term is associated with what you say and what you think and what you tell. Okay. The opposite is being intended. Here it says, how lucky it would be for you if you too were up to be deprived of sight. So it is the, the mortal sight. It is the physical sight that it actually indicates. That if you become blind like me, then you will not probably see what will be done by Bacchus in future. Because you will not accept Bacchus's power. Right? So how lucky it would be for you if you too were to be deprived of sight so that you could not behold Bacchus. Okay. Sacred rites or Bacchus are sacred rites. So while you will find that each and every personality, each and every one in this particular kingdom of Pentheus, they are celebrating Bacchus. They are celebrating Liber. Then Pentheus was against him. Pentheus was against the deed of celebration or something like that. The rites and rituals that have been performed by them. For a day will come. So here you can get a kind of a prophecy that has been done by uh, this man, that is Tiresias. For a day will come. And I warrant it is not far off when the new god Liber, son of Semel, will come hither. So it might be possible that with your arrogance, with your insolence, with your pride, you can bar your kingdom from, you know, celebrating or performing the celebratory rites of Bacchus, R-I-T-E-S. But I am, or I do warrant you, that the day is not so far when each and every one in this particular country, in this particular kingdom, will celebrate, will take part in the performatory rites and rituals of Bacchus, of Liber, the same one. So for a day will come, and I warrant it is not far off, when the new god Liber, son of Simil, will come hither. And unless you accord him the honor of worship in holy shrines, so now at this present moment you are not accepting, you are not accepting Liber, Bacchus. But unless you accord him the honor of worship in holy shrines, holy temples and so, you will be torn limb from limb. You will be torn into pieces and scattered in a thousand places, bespattering the woods with your blood and your mother and her sisters too. So you see, so that is a kind of a description. That is a kind of a thing that has been prophesied by Tiresias here. It says, you will be torn limb from limb. That means if you do not accept Liber and the celebratory performances regarding him. So ultimately your bodies will be fractured. And you will be scattered in a different thousand places. And bespattering the woods with your blood. The, the blood marks will be everywhere. And your mother and her sisters too. So they, everyone will take part in this. This thing will come to pass. You will deny the God of his honor. And lament that in my darkness I saw all too clearly. So here again, the particular orientation of darkness and illumination. <clears throat> visibility and invisibility. You know, blindness or ignorance and knowledge. These themes are very important and significant. 
and it will be and it is actually being discussed by Tiresias here. Even as he was uttering these warnings, as you see, that means when Tiresias was giving this particular kind of warning, the son of Achaean, that is Pentheus, he thrust him aside. But his words were proved true, his prophecies fulfilled. So at the beginning, at the story, we have been informed that what are the prophecies that have been made by Tiresias and how these have been proved true. And you will find in the next paragraph there, or paragraph onwards rather. Bacchus was now at hand, and the fields were ringing with the wild shrieks of his worshippers. Now, in these stories, as I mentioned earlier, that in these stories, we can find there are ample references of the gods and goddesses and mythological characters who have been associated with divine power and so. Ultimately, if you go through the Greek texts, if you go through the Latin texts and Roman texts, you will find that gods and the human beings, they lived close to each other. The certain kind of distanciation that we do, you know, uh, expect today, it was not being presented in this form of literature. So here, Bacchus, though he was a god, ultimately in these stories, in these texts, you will find that they are being presented as if just like a mortal human being. So Bacchus was now at hand and the fields were ringing with the wild shrieks of his worshippers. This is called Bacchanalian festival. Okay, so what happens, you know, if you if you read the anthropological history of Greek of the Greeks and also of the Romans, you will find such kind of festivals actually existed. Whether in the festivals it seemed as if the persons were possessed in Bengali, it is called, you know, a particular term is there, Bhorotha. It was just like that, as if the persons were possessed by Bacchus and maybe by other deity or goddesses. And what happens, you know, in that particular frenzied state, people could behave not according to, you know, the conscience or rather the typical rationalistic faculty or brain. They behave wildly. So here, the wild shrieks of his worshippers were generally being associated with the bacchanals or rather the festivals or like that. The whole populace, the whole population, streamed out of the city, men and women, old and young, the humbly born and those of the highest state, everyone. You will find that there are, you know, antithetical states have been incorporated. Whether it is the main, it is not gender specific. Whether it is the old and young, it is not being associated with the age. The humbly born and those of the highest state is not associated with the, with the class differentiation either. All rushing to celebrate the new rites. But Pentheus objected. Pentheus, he was the king, he was the ruler of this particular state. So ultimately Pentheus objected that these are not to be associated with them. And now this, this, this particular section, you know, it begins with the descendants of the serpent's race. So here you will find that whoa, what Pentheus said there. And how Pentheus objected, or rather, he was trying to control his men from entering into the festival, from taking part in the celebratory rites and rituals. These words are very significant. The questions can come, can come from this section. So, descendants of the serpent's race. Why it is called serpent's race? Because you will find these are being described in the previous sections. These have been described in the, in the previous tales that have been made by Ovid in Metamorphosis. But ultimately, this is not in this particular section that is in your syllabus. So, descendants of the Sarpain's race, they have been associated with the particular form. And they were considered to be the brave warriors. You will find there. These have been described. They are the heroic deeds. They did actually the heroic deeds. So, descendants of the Sarpain's race, he cried, Children of Mars, what madness has robbed you of your senses? You are the children of Mars. Mars, you know the god of war. So ultimately you are the warriors. You should fight. What are you doing here? What madness has robbed you of your senses? Can brazen symbols clashing, that means these are the, related with the, the rites, R-I-T-S and rituals. 
that have been associated with Bacchus. So here it says that what madness can rob has robbed you of your senses. Can brazen symbols, that is the, the shameless symbols clashing, pipes with carving horns, trickery and magic have an effect so great that men who face the shores of battle and heard its trumpets, undismayed, who were undaunted by the ranks of war with weapons drawn, should quail before wailing women and tinkling tambourines. So how can it be possible that it actually says? So Pintia says that you are the children of men, the children of Mars. What kind of madness be there that has robbed you of your senses? How can it be possible that the brazen's symbol clashing, the pipes of carving horns, you know, the horns are there. The trickery and magic, these have been associated with libel. These have been associated with the performative forms and so. It has an effect so great that the men like you, the men like my, my, my people, who actually faced the shores of battle, who are the warriors, and who heard its trumpets, trumpets, the trumpets, you know, the musical instrument that had been associated with any kind of battlefield. When the trumpets were speaking, when the trumpet, the sound comes from the cast trumpet, it actually situates the beginning of a war. He was, you know, that the people, my people, who actually faced a real battle, who heard its trumpets, undismayed, that means not without courage, who were undaunted, Odommu, by the ranks of war with weapons drawn, that means they have faced the war single-handedly and first-handedly, should quail, that is weeping before the weeping women and, and tinkling tambourines. So how can it be possible that they can, uh, uh, can face these kinds of things, that the tambourines are there, these are, you know, the, the, the musical instruments like tambourines. These are lower graded instruments to be specific. Here it says that quail before wailing women and tinkling tambourines and drunken madmen and disgusting fanatics. So these are the terms. Wailing women, tinkling tambourines, drunken madmen and disgusting fanatics. So everywhere you will find that somehow Pentheus is making a kind of classification. A kind of, as we should say, here is a particular kind of, you know, uh, it, it must be a kind of uh, hierarchization. What is more powerful and what is less powerful? What is to be considered as superior and what is to be considered as in inferior? And in this particular process, you will find that somehow, Bacchus is indicating, or sorry, the Pentheus is indicating towards that. That you are the people who are related with them, the higher forms, the superior habits, the superior attributes. And now you are mingling, you are mixing with the lower graded personalities, with the lower graded attributes, with the lower graded activities. How? I do not know. Which of you surprise me more? Which part of you? That part? Who actually did that or this part who are doing this you older men okay who after sailing far across the sea and building a new tire in this land a refuge for your exiled gods now allow it to be captured without a struggle or the younger men who are there because in this particular group I can see both the older men and also the younger men so which one of you or which group of you is the matters of most surprise to me? Because the older men, after sailing far across the sea and building a new tire in this land, a refuge for your exiled gods, now allow it to be captured without a struggle. So you were the older men, you always tried to protect our heritage, you always tried to protect our temperament and now you are inviting a lower graded god like Liber or Bacchus without any struggle. And there are others, the younger men, those of a more spirited age, nearer to my own, 
who should be wearing helmets, not garlands. Now you are taking part in the celebratory formations. Now you are taking part in the ritualistic performance and wearing garlands. But it is not the time for you to wear garlands. It is the actual time for you to wear helmets and fight. And you should carry martial arms, not back kick ones. So there is the difference. Remember your parentage. Remember your father. Remember your forefathers. I implore you and show the spirit of that serpent who one against many destroyed them all. So this is actually being associated with their parentage, with their forefathers, with their fight, with their temperament, with their warriorship and so. He gave his life for the sake of a pool and a spring of water. So these are the parts of the, the previous stories. He gave his life for the sake of a pool and a spring of water. Do you, by defeating the foe, defend the honor of your name? Okay. Or he slew men of villain. So ultimately, you should follow him altogether. Here it says, You then must root this feeble enemy. Who is this feeble enemy? The feeble, weak enemy is liber because the new God is entering into the field. And so maintain the glory of your fathers. If Thebes is fated to fall so soon, how I wish that gallant foemen were bringing down her walls with their engines of war that the roar of flames and the din of battle were sounding in our ears. So ultimately, if it is being destined, if the destiny is that, that Thebes is fated to fall so soon, how I wish that gallant foemen were bringing down her walls with their Indian support. The reason for Thebes' fall must be in the battlefield. It is not because a lower graded god like Liber or Bacchus comes there and just because of him that each and every personality is being ascribed or they are related with these particular rites and rituals. They forget everything related to war and something and ultimately thieves fall. Such a kind of would be the matter of disgrace and I don't want this to happen. So he continues in this particular fashion. So here he says, if thieves is fated to fall so soon, how I wish that gallant foemen, that is my enemies, gallant personalities, they are bringing down her walls, that is the walls of Thebes, with their engines of war, with the weapons and the, the cannons and like that. That the roar of flames and the deed of battle were sounding in our ears. That means when I would experience, yes, the Thebes is falling at this moment. Even at the last moment, I could hear the sound of the, of the war itself. We are the warriors. Each and every moment, I, I am also expecting the different kinds of sounds of wear, different kinds of, you know, tussles will go on. It is not in this particular type that Thebes is going to be destroyed. So, what are the other things that Pentheus is speaking here and what happens to him at the end? We will continue this in our next lecture. Thank you.